All right, hi everyone. Ross here from uh, Gemrock Auctions. Now, one of the questions that we always get asked is, you know, how do you facet a gemstone? How do you cut a gemstone? How do you take it from the rough and make it into a beautiful faceted gemstone? So today, I wanted to um, just show you the little piece of equipment that we use, the faceting machine, um, how we go about, uh, you know, designing a cut, talk about the angles, and then I'll show you, uh, I'll show you how it's done. So first of all, <clears throat> this is our faceting machine. Uh, this particular brand, this is one of ours uh, called uh, Tom Thumb. And basically, <clears throat> got a few different parts to the faceting machine. So this is the cutting wheel in here. We've got some water up there that we use for. Um, for some of the cutting, not all of the cutting, it's mainly just for the roughing in and the, the rough cuts. When we uh, when we go about polishing gemstones, we use a different, we don't use water, we use um, oil and some other things that I'll show you in a minute. Over here we've got our mast, and attached to that is where all the magic happens. This is our dop stick and our quill, and on here right now I've got a big chunk of synthetic blue uh, quartz I had my little neighbor over here he was on uh, school holidays so I had him over here and he was learning to cut he's only uh, seven years old so if a seven year old can learn how to cut a gemstone anyone can do it so um, first things first is when we get a piece of rough we have to kind of decide what we're going to do with it what shape we're going to cut it into and uh, we're lucky enough that we've got some computer programs these days. There's one program called uh, GemCAD that helps us design cuts for gemstones. So this one, this is a standard round brilliant. So that's looking at the top, looking at the side, looking at the bottom. And the good thing about GemCAD is that we can, uh, we can tell GemCAD what material it is that we want to facet with. So if we were going to, you know, facet a sapphire or a uh, piece of quartz, they're very different um, materials. So they need different angles. They have a different critical angle so that you don't get light leak. So lucky for us, we have this awesome uh, uh, program that calculates it for us. So if we have another look at this, we get some info here. I'm going to focus. We get a little... Uh, bit of info about what this actual design is uh, so we can see a standard round brilliant with a 60% table so that is the size of this table uh, as opposed to the whole size of the stone uh, it tells us that the person who designed this is John uh, Broadford he's one of the um, the founding members of the Australian Faceters Guild so he's taught me a lot uh, on how to facet and you can see here that uh, the angles are for a refractive index of 1.74 so that's the material that's a refractive index of the material that we're uh, we're using you know if it was quartz this refractive index should be 1.54 um, and then it also tells us you know how many facets we've got symmetry now it says that this particular design needs a 96 index so if I come back over here and look at our machine, on our quill here, you see that this has got 96 individual little teeth. So you can get all different types of uh, index wheels, 48, 54, 96 is the most common. You can pretty much make any, any gemstone design out of that. Uh, and then what else is interesting here is we get some other... Uh, ratio so length to width ratio uh, table to width ratio uh, these can be important when you're looking at a piece of rough to make sure that the rough will fit in in the uh, that the, sorry that the, the design will fit in the rough um, <clears throat> and then to create this gem we basically create this recipe so cutting a gemstone is just like cooking you you design it in GemCAD, or you can just you know GemCAD comes pre um, preloaded with a whole lot of different designs that you can modify and play around with, 
And then once all that's done, you get this recipe. And so what it's telling us is preform number one, the angle is 42 degrees, and you've got to cut facets at all of those different indexes. And if we look at our diagram, you can see the number one just here. So that facet there is this facet. So we come over to our machine, turn it to the side, we go, okay, I need 42 degrees, which is, bop, and we set it there. And then it tells us that the first cut that we need is at index number three. Let me just unlock this for you so I can show you. Unlock that. It's a bit blurry. So there's index number three, halfway in between 96 and 6. And so what that tells me is that when I go to cut my gemstone and I push it down onto the cutting wheel that's there, once it hits 42 degrees, that's the perfect angle for that facet. And that's all there is to it. And so we come back here and we cut it in index 3, index 9, index 15. And what we <coughs> end up with is... Let me see if this is going to focus. If it doesn't... I've got a special little macro lens for my phone. It's amazing what you can get these days. There you go. So you can see there that the... Uh, each of the individual little facets that we've cut, that my neighbour cut I should say. You can see that it's very rough, so there's no, the lines aren't straight, the points aren't meeting up properly, and that's just because this is the first round of cutting. So when we go about cutting gemstones, you know, we always start with what we call roughing in. So we just get the piece piece of rough and we put it on a, a very coarse wheel, um, somewhere around 100, 100 grit to 200 grit. And that's really rough. It's, it's just like sandpaper. It just, you know, rips away all the material that you don't need. And it, um, you know, starts to take the shape of the, of the gemstone. And then as we get uh, more and more into our um, accuracy, then we really start to uh, make sure that we're using finer and finer polish. And what that will do is eventually it'll start to uh, polish the surface of the gemstone. And then, you know, we'll finish off with a, with a nice gem. If I put this little macro back on. You might hear sometimes people talk about meat points. Now, meat points, that's how... Uh, Meat point faceting is pretty much how all these designs work these days. If we have a real close look at just here. So ideally, you want all of these points to come down and meet at exactly the same place. So if I have a look at, see this one right here, how it's wonky. You know... The founder of Atari said that the greatest things in life are easy to understand, but difficult to master. And that's what faceting is. So I've just shown you, you know, how it's just like reading a recipe. And you might think, so where does the skill come in? Well, the skill comes in, you need lots of patience. The skill comes in by getting these meat points perfectly lined up right here. So that there's no... There's no little wonky parts, that it all comes and meets in a, in a nice sharp little point. Now when my little uh, neighbour was learning to facet, he was doing a great job. And then he came over here and he got distracted. And what happened was when he was cutting that facet, you see how far he's cut that facet down? So he's cut that facet all the way down here. And he said, well what do I do now? And I said, well... What you've got to do now is cut it all over again. So once you overcut, this is called an overcut. Once you overcut one facet of a gem, then you have to go back and do the whole lot again so that they all match up. So you can imagine doing a, uh, a gemstone, maybe a nice expensive sapphire, and then you're nearly towards the end. You know, you've probably spent a good eight hours on it polishing. 
and then something can happen. You can uh, you can overcut. You could have a tiny little inclusion in there that you didn't see in the beginning, and a little bit could chip off. And what you've got to do then is you've got to go back and recut the whole thing. So it can be very frustrating, very time consuming. It can uh, definitely test your patience, but you know the the result is that you get a gemstone completely faceted, and you, know, you create something from from the rough, which is you know, I think it's wonderful. Um, just getting back to the cutting. So usually we have four or five processes depending on, um, you know, depending on what, what the material is. So something like this for quartz, I usually cut it, rough it in on 120 grit, really rough. And then we might go to a uh, 1200 grit. And then, so both of those are you know, on metal plates and they're really coarse. Uh, and then we'll go to pre-polish. So this is the third third wheel that we use and pre-polish is generally about 3000 grit. Um, there's all different types of polishes that you can use. You can use um, methylated spirits, you can use baby oil um, with really fine uh, diamond powder that you put on here. You can use things that are already suspended in a nice uh, liquid. Uh, or you can use, I think there's some of these new uh, new laps that are, also, that are already um, impregnated with diamonds, so you don't have to do anything. Um, and then your final polish, I usually use 100,000 grit. Um, some of the lower commercial stones will just use a, a 50,000 grit. I think 100,000 just looks nicer. Uh, so I think that's about it. Uh, if anyone's got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I've been cutting for probably five years now. Um, I like to take my time when I cut gems, but there's commercial cutters out there, especially up in the sapphire fields. Uh, you know, they can cut a gemstone. They can do a round brilliant in an hour and a half. So that's top and bottom. Ah, that's what I should mention. So when we're cutting, when we're cutting gemstones, we always start on the bottom. It's called the pavilion. So you cut the pavilion first, you get it all nice and polished, and then you put it in a transfer jig. So you need to flip it around so you can cut the top. So a transfer jig <clears throat> is just a special jig that you put it in. Another dop stop, dop stick comes and sticks on the top of the gemstone. You pop this one off, and then you you cut the top of the stone. Sometimes it's frustrating when you work on smaller stones because you might not leave enough material Accidentally you might leave enough material to, to cut a crown. So then uh, That's not much fun either. There's a few different things you can do uh, You could lower the crown. So if we have a look at this diagram again You know we can lower that crown and make it a little bit lower so that you're using this material um, but that might affect the way that Excuse me. That might affect the way that the the brilliance of the stone uh, comes out. Um, there are a couple of little small parts of this machine that we can use. There's this little thing called a cheat. So what a cheat does is it just allows us to very carefully move the angle of the stones by a very small amount, um, and that. You know, if we're, if we're a little bit off on a facet, we can just use the cheat just to roll it over a little bit. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great little tool. I tend not to use it because if you cut it right the first time, you shouldn't have to use the cheat. But, you know, it's there and it's a, sometimes it's a tool that needs to be used. When you use something like this, what I was trying to show my, uh, my neighbour is that this is synthetic blue quartz. It's... Um, it's not worth anything and it's man-made so you know inside is pretty clean there's not much there's no inclusions there's no gunk um, one of the hardest things when you're cutting your first real stone like a sapphire or a garnet any stone for that matter that has inclusions is trying to trying to um, trying to cut so that you cut the inclusions out while you maintain the most amount of weight, you know, sometimes you can um, not see inclusions, like I said before. Sometimes 
all of a sudden you'll be cutting away and then there'll be a little inclusion that just presents itself on the edge of a facet and then it might fly off and then you have to recut. Mm. Righto, everyone, thanks, uh, thanks for stopping by. I hope you've learnt something. Mm, I think, you know, faceting is a very slow process. So I didn't turn the machine on today. Uh, but I think it might be worth, you know, just going through uh, an actual cut one day. I don't know if anyone wants to sit around and watch me for eight hours. Um, but go through a cut and I can show you, you know, what, what it sounds like. The interesting thing about faceting is that uh, sound is just as important as sight. You know, you can, you can hear when the stone stops touching the lap when it's ground away enough. So there's a lot of different sensors that you can use to, to figure out if, if, uh, if the stone needs to be cut a little bit more. Leave your comments below if anyone's got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, thanks for stopping by.